the data wrangling. You came here for AI, right? AI has driven amazing breakthroughs on images, sound, text, and yet, often the most precious data of an organization is in tables. And here, scikit-learn is still the most popular package. Hmm. Maybe I sound like an old fart out of touch. You know, I co-founded scikit-learn 15 years ago, and I still fixate on this. But hear me out, the numbers don't lie. PyTorch is downloaded 34 million times from PyPy. You can check that online. Scikit-learn, 80 million times. Ah, shoot. <laughs> Pandas, it's just a data frame library. It's not even AI or machine learning. But again, maybe that's where the real challenge lies. Data preparation. They say that in data science, 80% of the time is spent on data preparation and 20% of the time on complaining about data preparation. All right, just to, to set the picture, this is the kind of data I'm talking about. So it's a table. It has numbers, but it also has categories, strings, you know, different columns of different nature. This is typically the kind of data I work with when I work with hospitals, when I work with insurances, when I work on, on supply chain. And here, what we need is data preparation. Basically, we're taking those tables, we're merging tables, we're normalizing the cells, we're encoding the values. What we end up doing is transforming everything to numbers. Because really, statistical modeling is at heart easier on numbers. Even, even an LLM will end up basically you know, projecting things on numbers. So we need to do all those transformations to facilitate learning. That sounds like a job for deep learning, right? Well, a couple years ago, we looked at that. We looked at that really hard, and we were quite disappointed. What we found is that on typical tabular data, tree-based models, for instance, XGBoost or scikit-learn, outperform deep learning methods that were tailored for tree-based methods that had been published. And I want to point out that scikit-learn is great in boosting method, gives a really good trade-off between compute time and prediction performance. I'm very happy about this. So, Tabular data has properties that are fundamental to this behavior. You know, it has different columns, and as I mentioned, all the columns are different. Technically, they have non-Gaussian distributions. It often has categorical features, and these features are extremely well aligned with the inductive bias of trees. Now, what's a tree? It's an old method. It's an old method that proceeds by choosing one direction, one, one column, and then doing a binary decision on it. And again, and again, and again. So it's, you know, it's a feature by feature decision. And that's very, very well aligned with the kind of properties we have in tabular data. That's why, you know, XGBoost or gradient boosting works so well. I'll come back to neural networks. First, let me talk a bit about Scrub. In the recent that I've presented just before, data preparation was still needed. Because the reason I presented before, we took those you know, complicated tables and we already transformed them to numbers. So that's one thing that Scrub can do for you. You can just use the tabular learner function, and this tabular learner will give you a model that operates, a predictive model, just like a scikit-learn model, that operates directly on data frame, even when they're super messy. What's going on behind this is data preparation. The goal of Scrub is to ease pre-processing and feature engineering for tabular machine learning. And the, the, the workhorse of what I've just shown you 
is what we call the table vectorizer. So the table vectorizer is a scikit-learn transformer, if you use scikit-learn. And it takes a data frame in, and it transforms it to a good numerical representation. And for this, it really applies heuristics on the different columns, heuristics that we've meta-tuned on many data sets. So typically, a column is made of uh, date or times. We use a date-time encoder. A column contains simple categories, strings, a one-hot encoder. A column contains complex categories. We do something a bit more complicated. And let me walk you through this. So string entries are a common problem, because often they're basically a form of open-ended category. And that just breaks the categorical representations that we use in statistics or machine learning. And that's one example of where Scrub uses more advanced features, you know, AI. And for this, we, we do substring modeling. So the idea is that in most of those you know, complicated strings, even, even when they're uh, codes that don't make sense to a non-specialist, such as machine parts in a, in a car manufacturer, typically the substrings contain information. So we're going we're to do substring modeling. And so we have a tool, one tool amongst others, called the gap encoder. And what the gap encoder will do is that it's going to do the substring modeling to find latent categories, to find latent directions to represent the strings. And so here I've shown the, the gap encoder. I've shown the matrix it creates from the categories. And what you can see is that in the first direction, it has identified, for instance, the word legislative. So the first direction encodes for legislative. This is done automatically. This works on any kind of jargon, even jargon that might not be well represented in a, um, a general purpose language model. So this is a good example of what Scrubs does for you. Less wrangling, you get basically an encoding that's a categorical-like encoding without cleaning the strings. And you can focus on the machine learning. OK, so we have data tables. They have heterogeneous columns. They have dates, strings. They can have missing values. And so, you know, I've told you, the tabular learner, by default, the tabular learner, it just combines the table vectorizer with scikit-learn's his gradient boosting. But you can use it on anything else, any other model. So what are the good models? And let me come back to neural networks. So if we think about the successes of neural networks in vision, in text, they're typically with very large data sets, and users typically use them by downloading pre-trained models. We're seldom, in this case, in your typical tabular data. So can, how can we achieve pre-training for data tables? What kind of priors can I have for just a bunch of numbers here? That's really hard, right? And now, if I add strings, if I add you know, a caption, column names, string entries, now we can start thinking about you know, useful priors. As a data scientist, for instance, I would typically compute the body mass index here. So I'm convinced that if we want to move forward with this topic, we need the column names and all the strings to contextualize the numbers. And I, I want to stress this. The numbers are incredibly important in what we do. But so are the column names and the strings. And so we need to model them jointly. And so we've worked on this in my research group. And the question we've asked is, how can we build data processing that basically recognizes implicitly the data semantics? For this, at the cell level, we can work with the string modeling or language modeling, like I, I showed you before. And at the column level, without going into too much detail, we need to model the local relational structure. So Underlying this data, we can think of a relational graph, and how do we model it? And so this is what we've done in the uh, CART model, which is fairly bleeding-edge research. And basically, we've pre-trained a graph neural network on a lot of relational data. 
And at the end of the day, CART is the best predictor in a large comparison of method. You can see it because it's further to the top right, and you can see that it has quite a margin. So we're really happy. You know, we got deep learning to work. CART seems very promising. It's powerful. It's a bit difficult to install. I mean, hopefully you can install it. It's on PyPy, but you know, you're going to need the dependencies and the GPUs. And well, it's resource hungry, right? You're not going to get deep learning for free. But resource usage really matters. For instance, Stability AI, a darling Gen AI startup, went into real troubles because they couldn't put the compute bills. And more generally, we have very serious investment banks that are questioning the cost-benefit ratio. So, and actually, this has been a trend in many talks, is we need to keep an eye on the cost-benefit ratios. And I'm very personally worried about what's been happening in AR over the last 20 years. The cost of the compute has been rising and rising and rising. And importantly, the cost of the compute has been rising despite the improvement in hardware and software. So it's not a question of just Moore's law. It's a question that we're just using more and more compute. That's true for training. It's true for inference, too. And with this, of course, goes more footprints, such as environmental footprint. So let's look at those benchmarks again. CART is best. But what this really shows us is that data pre preparation is really important. Data preprocessing is really important. Because if you go down that list, and I don't expect you to do it right now, but if you go down that list, you'll find that there are many differences across the same methods with different data prepar uh, preparation. What we find is that, for instance, combining language models, including large language models, with trees works extremely well. And we also see that Scribe's table vectorizer really helps methods to work on these very complex data frames. And we can even see that logistic regression combined with table vectorizer is actually a very, very strong baseline. And that's a very cheap baseline, one that you can run anywhere. OK, so you know we have different trade-offs. We have CART, deep learning, powerful, but heavy. And in Scrub, we're interested in exploring the trade-offs. Something that's really dear to my mind is to keep really easy to install and to adopt so that it can be used by many people on their own hardware to process their data, possibly private data, for instance, in hospitals. OK, so Scrum is about facilitating data wrangling. We're just about to merge optional use of LLMs, if you want to use them for that, so you can choose your poison. But what I've really shown you is that with the table vectorizer, optionally with LLMs or not, predicting from a messy table is pretty much solved. I'm starting to think this. And Scrub is about much more. One little example, data exploration. We have the table report. And the table report is super easy to use. It will work in a notebook. It will work in VS Code. It will work in a, in a, a static web page. And it, gives you an interactive display of your table on which you can click to f explore your data. You can move around. You can see the data distributions, which sometimes is very important. You can have a summary statistic of everything in the table. So where are missing values, for instance? When you're working with a lot of data, that's really important. And there's a tab association that's you know warning me that Two of my columns look very similar. It's telling me that the department column and the department name column look very similar. There's basically a one-to-one -one mapping to them. And if I go back to them, I can see this. I mean, they're different strings, but there is an absolute one-to-one -one mapping. You know, that's an example of the kind of things that we need to figure out fast when we're doing data wrangling. 
And that's an example of the things that Scrub facilitates. Okay, I've talked a lot about prediction, but remember, Pandas is the most used data science package. So Scrub bridged the gaps between Pandas-like transformations and machine learning. It has an API that I'm showing here that starts in directly from the database and applies machine learning translation. Sorry, machine learning transformations. So it can do this on multiple tables. So what you, you're seeing here is that we're doing this on multiple tables, and we're going to transform those, those tables, and we're going to merge information later in multiple ways, right? It could be a merge via join or an aggregation. And this is all done in, a, in a, uh, an API that looks very much like a data frame, so it should be easy to use for a data scientist. The thing is that those pipelines can be associated to predictors. So you can transform the full pipeline into a predictor, and then you can optimize the full pipeline. You can optimize those transformations to maximize prediction. Behind the hood, this API is building a transformation graph. That's really important because it can be reapplied to new data. So you can retrain your model, including all the transformations that come before. Or you can put it in production. One day, I dream of these kind of graphs being put in production with potential optimizations to minimize recompute to compute things in parallel. Now, what I've presented is work in progress. We have the code. It will probably change. It's not merged yet. However, this is open source. You can work with us. You can make this go faster. You can give us feedback. This work and the work that me and my team have done behind Scikit-Learn have been done in a research institute for very long. They've been paid by taxpayer money. We're trying to go a bit faster, and so we have a spin-off to accelerate development. But the spin-off is probable, centered on open source. So you can help us here. I've talked about data wrangling, but really, I've talked about how to do less data wrangling and more machine learning, which is what we're trying to do in Scrub. This is important because data wrangling is the number one challenge in data science. And when you think about it, it's really about the cognitive overload and managing complexity. And this is why the API that I've shown you before is important. It's to reduce the cognitive overload. And it's also about the split between the data scientist and the data engineer in Scrub is trying to bridge this gap. So if you or your teams are doing data science, you should watch out for Scrub. Thank you.